That's Sadler in the white trunks. 15 rounds for the title here in Madison Square Garden. As you can see, Sandy is a two inches taller than Red Top. And at 28, he's three years younger. Both boys are ring veterans. Davis weighs exactly 126. Sadler, 124 and a half. Sandy's pretty rough, as you know. Referee Harry Kessler talking to him. Sadler guarding against that jab. The smaller red top moves fast. Sadler is a converted southpaw. Looks a little annoyed as those left jabs pop his head back. He's holding and hitting. Referee is cautioning him for holding with one glove behind Red Top's uh, head and pounding away at his body with the other. That's a foul, of course. Sadler again in white trunks out of his corner. He's tall for a featherweight. He's five feet eight inches. And he can pack a punch for his size. He's got one of the highest knockout percentages in professional boxing. 98 knockouts in 153 fights. But he's got a rough game little customer on his hands. Red Top Davis, by the way, has three battle stars as a soldier in World War II. And he was the lightweight champion of the ETO. Again, Sadler is warned for grabbing his opponent by the throat. He pays little attention to referees. shots here of how Sandy operates with his elbows as well as ripping that glove up with the inside and the laces glancing across his opponent's eyes. He knows every trick in the trade. He's fought all over the world. Red top pinned in his corner. That's the end of the round. Now the challenger is out of his corner, and we're at the halfway mark in this 15-round battle. It's in Madison Square Garden. It's for the featherweight championship of the world. Sandy Sadler in the white trunks. Red top Davis in the black. Davis has continued to wade right into the taller champion, but uh, Sadler has very definitely landed the harder punches. Notice that Sadler has the better of the infighting and those long arms of his make him very difficult to fight. It's like battling an armload of spaghetti. He definitely is in control now. Gets the better of the infighting. Meanwhile, referee Harry Kessler is still complaining that the champion is not fighting fairly, but uh, has not penalized him. Merely remonstrated.
Sadler fell into a left hook then. That caught him in the tummy. Note that Sadler makes very little effort to stand off with clean jabs. He likes to get in, swarm all over his man, and rough him up in close. That's a typical Sadler trick of twisting his man off balance. The referee now is speaking to both about it. Sadler out of his corner, very confident. Davis in the black trunks, though definitely behind in the ringside scorecards, is far from a beaten boxer. He's still ready, willing, and able to trade punches with the champion, but he's taken a lot of punishment. Note how often uh, Sadler's stinging lefts are hitting the mark. Sadler is much more confident now, very cocky. Very good photography brings out the theme of the fight, that long left. He has arms as long as broomstick handles. Sadler keeping the pressure on. Doesn't give his man a chance to set himself. He's stepping up the pace as the round nears its end. That's the end of the round. Now we have the 15th and final round. They touch gloves in the traditional gesture. It's Madison Square Garden and it's Teddy Redtop Davis in the black trunks challenging Sandy Sadler for the featherweight championship of the world. Now, of course, at this stage of the fight, the edge is all for the champion. Since the 10th round, Sandy Sadler has clearly been the harder puncher and the more effective boxer. Only chance for the outgunned Redtop is for a knockout but it's pretty obvious that Sadler isn't going to give him that opportunity. Sandy banging away at the body now. Alternates his leads, head to body, an occasional whistling right. Meantime, Red Top there, picking his man off with clean jabs. That's his best scoring weapon. Pace is fast for a 15-round fight, and you know both men are in condition. Davis is kept off balance. Davis is the superior boxer, but doesn't have a chance to show it when he's kept off balance by the pressing champion. Excellent ringside view brings you right down under the ropes.
Coming into the home stretch now. The champion looks unmarked. He's an eye catcher with his white shoes and white trunks. Well, that's it. Fifteen rounds are finished in Madison Square Garden in another world championship battle. The decision of the ringside officials is unanimous in favor of Sandy Sadler. Johnny Addy makes the announcement. Sandy defeats Red Top Davis and remains the world featherweight king.